Tragic news for fans of the San Jose band Smash Mouth. A longtime frontman Steve Harwell died today at age 56. Harwell was born in Santa Clara and is being remembered for his irrepressible charm and charisma. Earlier today, I spoke to Jim Harrington, music critic for the San Jose Mercury News, who followed Harwell's career and wrote the singer's obituary for the newspaper. It was pretty remarkable, you know, Smash Mouth, um, was a San Jose band and we take our San Jose bands very seriously because we don't get a lot of them that actually make it out into the, the national spot like, like that. We, you know, live in the, the shadow a little bit of San Francisco and er Oakland and Berkeley and that sort of stuff. And so it was just great to see them in, in the nineties and they were just known as hustling, absolutely hustling out there in order to get their music heard. And, um, they had, um, a connection with the old radio station KOME, which was a real legendary rock station back in the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And they were able to get one of their songs on the radio um, in the mid-90s. And that really led to them getting discovered by Interscope Records, who would then sign them and they would get their first record out in 1997, the cheekily entitled Bush. You Mang. I want to pronounce that correctly. Bush You Mang. <laughs> Love that. And, you know, quickly after that, they got huge in the 90s, right? The late 90s. The yes. band was nominated for a Grammy. And for anyone that's watching that may not know the band, right, from the 90s, uh, we all know the famous all star song from the 2001 animated film Shrek. Um, what were some of their other big career highlights? Well, the real career-making song was Walking on the Sun. And that was a song that came out and really sort of ushered in that whole sort of retro vibe that would be uh, big for a while. And it was like something that, uh, a breath of fresh air, and yet it felt uh, very familiar because people who had grown up with surf rock and 60s sounds and things like that, it just sounded really great. And, you know, Harwell's voice, such a big part of that, you know, was big and boisterous and fun. But also, it, I really see it as the trio that he was lucky enough to connect up with Greg Camp, who was the band's guitarist. He wrote all the music, all the significant music for the band, at least for sure. And then a guy by the name of Eric Valentine, who produced it and really gave it that sort of funky retro vibe. And that song came out and, you know, people just couldn't get enough of it. And it was great. And that song uh, propelled the that first album to double platinum heights. And I think everyone was like amazed, you know, like here's this San Jose band that all of a sudden has a double platinum hit on his hands. Were there any other highlights that you could mention? I mean, obviously late nineties, then early two thousands continued success, right? right? Well, that second album, you know, they always talk about how difficult it is to follow things up and whether or not, you know, someone might be a one hit wonder. And Smash Mouth, you know, really sort of had that look of a one hit wonder. And there was a lot of haters that were like pointing at them. They're never going to replicate Walking on the Sun. You know, this was this was an era where you had bands that were coming out and getting huge first albums, huge first singles and all that. Record labels were throwing money, you know, trying to find the next Pearl Jam or, or Nirvana or something like that. And these bands were getting signed, getting pushed real hard and then dropped, uh, you know, nearly as quickly. And so there was a lot of um, pressure on Smash Mouth to try and match. And they did really what was, I think, a lot of people thought was unthinkable, which their next album, Astro Lounge, which was released two years later, it turned out to be even bigger. You know, that one went triple platinum. And um, that one, as you mentioned, All Star, that was on there. And All Star came out and everybody loved that song. And people remember that it was included in Shrek, but they don't remember that that was two years later. You right. know, they, you know, by the time it was included in Shrek, it was already a Grammy nominated song. It already had topped uh, like the mainstream rock charts. Uh, it, it was an international hit and um, the, the band was, you know, they had that song featured in Inspector Gadget and in other movies and all sorts of things like that. So they were sailing high. That second round album, Against All Odds, was even bigger. You kind of mentioned this about Harwell's voice, but what do you think made him such a superstar? Hmm. You know, I just think that he just put all of it in it. And I don't think he had, he was not bad at all, right? He just, uh, if he needed somebody to go big, uh, Harwell was your guy, right? And he wasn't trying to be cool. He wasn't trying to be 
uh, tuneful. He wasn't whatever, but he wanted to be the guy with the mic that was having more fun than anybody else. And I really think that translated. Uh, no, he left the band in 2021. And as we know from his manager, he died from liver failure. Um, you wrote his obit today. How do you think the music world will remember Steve Harwell? Uh, I think initially that they're going to remember him um, for the, the latter years, that uh, all the crazy stuff that ended uh, his his career with Smash Mouth for that controversial, chaotic show that he did in New York, which, uh, you know, that, that he went off the rails, you know, call it like it was, you know, he basically went off the rails and was yelling all sorts of things that um, someone shouldn't be yelling, right? And um, I think that all that and the TikTok videos and all that will, will will stay with. But I think as time goes on and generations continue to dig into Shrek and, and you know, parents continue to put on Shrek for, uh, you know, their four-year-olds uh, as a babysitter and all that, that hopefully those sort of things will pass and will be remembered with, with a guy who made some really great music. And um, as far as San Jose goes, um, you know, Smash Mouth was a treasure. Uh, we haven't had a lot of big bands. And I think the Smash Mouth legitimately must be hailed as the second biggest San Jose band of all time. Uh, not that there's a lot of competition for that, right? I mean, there is for Bay Area bands, but I think the band that, that can only, you know, eclipse what Smash Mouth did, obviously, would be the Doobie Brothers. And they eclipse it by a long ways. But uh, Smash Mouth uh, deserves to be inducted in, in the San Jose um, Rock Hall of Fame. They, they need to um, be honored for what they were, you know, one of the best to ever come out of this area, for sure.